Everyone is a psychopath. This is the most critical message in Christopher Hutt's The Psychopath's Bible. Starting with a humoristic recommendation to check with your doctor, lawyer and local police station before attempting any written in it, the book distinguishes itself from the sweetness and stuff of in typical self-help and spirituality. Using occultism, philosophy, social psychology and the author's life experience, it presents truths most people have difficulty swallowing. Hence, the Psychopath's Bible is written for a rather exotic person. While I by no means pretend to fall into this category, I'll briefly discuss some of the parts I find most interesting. Before that, let me remind you to subscribe to all my channels if you like the content. Consider purchasing my books and making a small donation using the provided links. Given that, let us begin with the author, helping you understand why I'm reviewing his work on this channel. Christopher Hart Born Alan Ronald Miller, Christopher Hart was a psychologist and occultist with two master's degrees and two PhDs. Founder of Falcon Press, Hart published authors like Robert Anton Wilson, Timothy Leary, Juan Mayo Cat and others, including Israel Rigardi, of whom he was a student. Hart was involved in numerous orders and occult systems, including Chaos Magic, The Lima and The Golden Dawn, which he started a chapter of in the 90s. At some point of his life, Hart also created a Telemic Golden Dawn Order, but that is a subject you may want to research on your own. Pandemonium According to the American Heritage Dictionary, a psychopath is a person who engages in psychopathic behavior or is affected by antisocial personality disorder. The Psychopath's Bible stresses how the word is almost always associated with criminal activity. Also how both socio and psychopath are marked as the same antisocial personality disorder. Hart explains that this is for the convenience of the psychiatric and justice systems enabling them to consider only behavior without intentional internal psychological factors. Socio versus Psychopath Elsewhere, the Psychopath's Bible also makes a definitive distinction between socio and psychopath. Quote, there is a simple difference between socio and psychopath. The sociopath is against people and himself. He is dependent. He needs to harm others to be himself. The psychopath exists for himself. Other people are simply there as allies, obstacles, tools, but mostly they are just there. He causes no harm for harm's sake. He stands for more life, joy, power and freedom for himself and his own kind. Unquote. True individuality. The Psychopath's Bible reveals that society treats true individuality as a pathology. That includes everyone disagreeing with the notion of consumerism, marriage, reproduction and basically living a group life. Standing against violence, the book separates violent or criminal and unacceptable behavior from the term psychopath. It further explains that while violent ones surely exist, that's only one of many types of psychopaths, so linking those is extremely narrow-minded and in reality, psychopaths often turn out to be some of the most successful, influential and well-reputed people. Different Psychopaths Quote, In reality, there are many operating psychopaths who never reach the public eye. Some are never identified as such because they are successful at what they do, i.e. they do not get caught. Many more are never characterized as psychopaths because they do not exercise unacceptable criminal behavior. Remember that criminal behavior, especially violent criminal behavior, is usually considered one of the essential defining characteristics of the psychopath and thus are considered acceptable, even valuable members of society." Unquote. Addressing some common definitions of the term psychopath, the Psychopath's Bible brings one provided in the fourth edition of the Diagnostic of Statistical and Mental Health. Quote, the essential future of antisocial personality disorder is a pervasive pattern of disregard for and violation of the rights of others that begins in childhood or early adolescence and continues in adulthood. Unquote. The rights of others. The Psychopath's Bible marks how the same DSM-4 doesn't define what those actual rights are supposed to be nor recognizes complete mental health as an actually possible thing. It rather acknowledges all human beings as a particular kind of psychopaths. And for this, the Psychopaths Bible suggests familiarizing yourself with such reads. That way you can recognize your and your family's and friends' mental disorders, which, as we know from Israel Rigardi, is of great use to the serious occult student. How much self-esteem? Using some healthy common sense, Hart addresses an obvious societal controversy to be also apparent in the same DSM-4. While global culture and society praise high self-esteem, exhibiting more than your shrink accepts is unacceptable. But does this make you a psychopath and should you read the book? The Toxic Magician aka The Practitioner 
You can find the answer to the first by doing the earlier mentioned. The Psychopaths Bible stresses that while all psychopaths can benefit from reading it, one type will reap the most benefits. In a nutshell, that might be regarded as an exceptionally capable and talented individual unable to fit within the group mind. A radical non-conformist with a unique perspective, essence, skill set and even charisma. It turns out society's governing forces have no use for such people but to turn them into slaves to a cause, god, group and apparently today's companies. Therefore, the Psychopaths Bible is a high quality self-help for such people. Quote, this book was written to uphold, encourage and counsel the best among these wretched, sheep-like species called man. It pulls no punches, it makes no apologies, it misses no words. It applauds the rare individual who writes his own song, plays his own tune and lives his own life. In particular, it speaks to a particular breed of psychopath, which we call interchangeably the toxic magician, the practitioner or the manipulator. The most effective of these we refer to simply and reverentially as the master. As with all psychopaths, Hiroshi recognizes the pathetic nature of the human condition and takes from it what he can, but the toxic magician goes further. He encourages quote-unquote homo normalis to live life according to his nature. The wife Thomas Hobbes characterized as brutish, nasty and short, Levatan 1651. He encourages the human race to precipice. He does what he can to help the species destroy itself and let nature get on with something or something's different. Unquote. I don't know about you, but I think this complements the later included quote from Nietzsche's The Antichrist. Quote, this more valuable type has existed often enough already, but as a lucky accident, as an exception, never is willed. He has rather been the most feared. He has hitherto been virtually the thing to be feared. And out of fear, the reverse type has been willed, bred, achieved. The domestic animal, the hurt animal, the sick animal, the Christian. Unquote. Destruction. When speaking of destruction, Hart mainly refers to destroying the delusions and illusions manufactured by the societal matrix. That includes the destruction of the pre-programmed desires while removing the influence of mainstream culture and the corporate world. Quote, the willful application and direction of man's mind and power to the ends which he desires is the necessary primal force which accomplishes the true organic will of the toxic magician. Unquote. Quote, he is a magician because he works his own will to achieve his own ends. He is toxic because destruction is his goal. From society's standpoint, he is the worst of the psychopaths because he does his own work intentionally. As such, he stands apart from their definitions. Definitions which would like to emphasize the inability of the psychopath to control himself. The toxic magician is conscious of his actions and feelings. This makes him especially dangerous. Unquote. Made and not born. Usually toxic magicians are made and not born. On the contrary, considering some of the author's comments on Timothy Leary, I believe certain people have the right predisposition. Venerating Gurdjieff, Hart mentions that only 5% will succeed while the others are food. So I think it's safe to assume that becoming a toxic magician requires what Gurdjieff defined as superhuman efforts. Although having downsides like the possibility of ending up lonely and the necessity of immense concentration and hard work, such wife Hart explains, offers significant benefits. The biggest being the freedom from society's delusions about safety, security, the supremacy of the species, randomness, religious and political dogmas, codes, cultures, pointless and time-wasting friendships and interactions, etc. Essentially, this makes me think that the toxic magician, a wise wit or even a dubbed set as an archetype, and therefore kills a pep, eliminating its wise, which are that same delusions and programming. When telling the story of how editors refused to edit and publish it, regarding it as a disease that must not spread, the Psychopath's Bible gives its first lesson. Quote, Never say exactly what you mean if you want the cooperation of the coward. Unquote. The author reveals that despite how pathetic they might seem, everyone is looking for their own interest, which for most people is not being pushed i.e. finding satisfaction in not playing to win but feeling safe and morally superior to the winners. Hart also stresses how university degrees get disreputed because they deserve to and how apparently mediocrity reigns. Comments Regarding the latter, I suggest considering the numerous people getting into massive debts for virtually useless degrees. Also how many others make an incredible living as a college or even high school dropouts. Then consider global culture by looking at celebrity influencers. 
then at contemporary self-help, ravenously ranting against mediocrity by remarketing and reinforcing obsolete patriarchal values and religious dogmas, or by teaching you how to be masculine by growing a beard and blaming women for your misfortune. Lastly, consider the endless count of YouTubers pushing the lowest possible quality with the highest frequency, and how they are all convinced they have an amazing and unique personality just like the next guy or gal. I ask, is this really an alternative or instead those are some of the new faces of mediocrity? Whoever he is, I bet Sam Awohim knows the answer. The strong and the weak. Also intriguing is how the Psychopath's Bible presents the dynamic between the strong and the weak. The strong heart explains, we will never get rid of the weak because that would be a poor investment inevitably leading to killing each other or living at a considerable distance and eventually dying from boredom. But is man a killer? Challenging the notion that man is a killer, the Psychopath's Bible regards man mainly as an exploiter and manipulator capable of killing when starving to death. The book makes numerous remarks that as species, humans are innately driven toward mass destruction. It also emphasizes that humanity's favorite sports are control and manipulation even when that leads to the destruction of the self neither the masses nor their masters care about. Not the typical rebel. While most mystical schools would advocate against that, hard practitioner actively aims to speed up the process of bringing the inevitable future. I believe this makes the practitioner different from the more traditional Telemite or Satian who would rebel against or regard it as a necessity for controlling the masses. The toxic magician on the other hand finds way to accelerate the process organically. It is their way to thrive and prosper. And while this might sound crude, the Psychopath's Bible explains that the every Jane or Joe, whom many campaigns pretend they so dearly protect, is utterly numb to the control and exploitation. In fact, they cannot live without it incapable of imagining an alternative. Quote, the generic victim needs to be a victim. He needs to be controlled lest he faces the void, an abyss so deep that Dante himself would have been unable to feel. Unquote. The victim. When finishing part 1, The Toxic Magician, Hart explains that this victim, i.e. the common man, is a domestic primate who has everything necessary to destroy and be self-destructive. Rather than acknowledging and working with that, this domesticated primate gets nullified by his emotions including depression, guilt, anxiety, sorrow and fear. And that, Hart explains, is what makes them behave in a society which the book likens to an insane asylum. Comments On the one hand, this might sadden the reader because of the state of humanity. On the other, it makes them want to detach from that, feeling it deserves its fate. It really makes you stop and consider how similar most people are. It also shows the panic attacks and depression sufferers what their conditions truly are. Their own nature's devices to keep them on a leash, preventing their greatness. And while the more conventional Setian and Telemite accept or even strive to appreciate or adore such conditions as an indivisible part of themselves and the ecstasy of Nuit, Hart's practitioner recognizes them as a weakness or hiccup to be overcome. Toxic Calculus Regarded as the process of de-education, Toxic Calculus helps you purify your being of your internal and external conditioning and beliefs. Like Robert Tanto Wilson's Prometheus Rising and Quantum Psychology, the Psychopath's Bible explains that doing so is the only way to unveil your full potential and genius, which it basically regards as the psychopath within you. What that means is breaking your chains and becoming what you're truly capable of rather than sticking to your programming and denying it. Also like the mentioned books, the Psychopath's Bible shares the chaos magic perspective that gods and goddesses are inventions of the brain. Mentioning the education, the author provides numerous resources for parents to raise their children without sending them to school. Beliefs Quote The strength of a man is a function of his beliefs. The more he has, the weaker he is. Belief Something believed or accepted as true, especially a particular tenet or body of tenets, simply because a person, an authority or a number of persons assert it is true. Accepting a string of words as valid without any evidence. As Robert Anto Wilson says, faith is stupidity. Unquote. The Psychopath's Bible advocates being brutally honest with yourself and adopting habits and beliefs, the validity and benefits of which you can test empirically. If something cannot be tested, do not believe in it, eradicate it from your life. And this includes overthrowing idols, ideals, labels, titles, gurus and deities you worship and basically emptying your mind of the nonsense you and the world filled it with. For magicians, it also implies purging your practice from rituals that do not bring any real value to your life. The biggest obstacle. 
The biggest obstacle to overcome is humans' bondage to their nature. Toxic calculus, the psychopath's Bible explains, is the mathematics of power, i.e. the device through which that obstacle can be overcome. It is de-educating or basically undoing yourself, as Dr. Hart liked to say. Quote, Toxic with a K, capable of brain change, power, becoming who you are, especially by inventiveness, practice, will, deceit and study. Calculus. A. A branch of mathematics that deals with limits and the differentiation and integration of functions of one or more variables. B. A method of analysis or calculation using a special symbolic notation. C. The combined mathematics of differential and integral calculus. The reasoning and the emotional brain. Hart touches on a concept recently getting quite a bit of mention in popular psychology and self-help, the rational and the emotional brain. The Psychopath's Bible reveals that unlike what many people think, we are not rational beings, we are emotional beings capable of rational thinking. Ahead of his time, Hart explains that our emotional brains are the actual decision makers, and all the reasoning and rationalizing we do is to justify those decisions, making them appear reasonable. Comments To learn more about the latest research on that, I strongly suggest the works of scientists like Kelly McGonagall and Baba Shif, such as my second book, Discipline or Something Else. The same has plenty of the newest research on that and other self-discipline related topics. Coin Dependence Hart explains that while most people live in a complete codependence bonded by their weaknesses, true individualists need others for their values. They live while others exist. And I believe this implies asking whether adopting such mentality is entirely possible in an extremely interdependent society. And the answer to this question is found pretty much all over the book. Chameleon One key is to become very good at pretending and wearing a mask while sharing your work and plans only with the right people. Another is to be maximally adaptable and flexible, learning as much as possible about everything and anything and implementing it whenever the situation calls for it. Quote, In this world, ultimate flexibility and adaptability are essential. Be capable of anything at any time. Your first investment is yourself. You must learn everything you can, believe everything others believe and then believe nothing. You become the chameleon while everybody else is becoming something." Unquote. Quite appealing, I believe this contradicts the notion that each person should have their niche keeping their mind in a cubby hole and basically dying a one-trick pony. Instead, it provokes you to explore what your potential offers and make the best out of it. And this reminds me how the whole book winds with the Socrates saying that the unexamined wife is not worth living. So apparently, being a jack of all trades is the name of the game. Habits and brain change Once more ahead of its time, the Psychopath's Bible addresses the subject of habits, particularly how numerous tiny efforts over the long term and not one big lift bring the desired results. This is how one's habits and personality develop through brain change resulting from religiously engaging in a specific activity. The more you play chess, write or code, the more those neuron connections strengthen, making your brain more efficient at those things. Including an excerpt from William James's Principles of Psychology, the Psychopath's Bible reveals the miraculous effects of compounding decades before bestsellers like James Clear's Atomic Habits and B.J. Fox's Tiny Habits. Then the book gets into its most practical section, encompassing exercises, rituals and meditations. I think you'll most definitely enjoy those if you're a fan of Undoing Yourself, Prometheus Rising and Quantum Psychology. And now, rather than saying some final words, let me end this review with one of my favorite wisdom gems in the book, asking you to share your thoughts on it in the comments below. Quote, The moral idealist will always lose to the man of passion, commitment and go, the psychopath. A man who loves his work is a rare man indeed and he will always triumph over the moralist, the man who does his work for the right reason. Unquote. This concludes my review of Dr. Christopher Hart's The Psychopath's Bible for the Extreme Individual. I'll be happy if you share your thoughts about the book and this video in the comment section. Also, let me know whether you enjoy the work I've been doing on this channel. Subscribe if you appreciate the content, consider purchasing my books and making a small donation, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for your time.